So if we see it in action, there it goes. It's looking pretty much like it did initially when we had just the one dynamic null. All of the twitching is gone. And there we go. We have reaction to the wheel movement. And of course we can change that reactivity by altering the distance that we use and tweak it in that manner. You may remember I said when we were creating the dynamic about the center of rotation and how that could be moved. We can also change, of course, the distance in the original dynamic now just by moving the dyne pin null in this fashion. And that, of course, will change the degree of swing occurring there. So we can play with those two distances to get the kind of reactivity that we're wanting in our body. So there we have it. We've got our nice dynamic body going on with the you know, wheel motion reaction and all of that. And that pretty much completes, you know, this little section of it. So we're going to move on to the next bit, which is actually putting the suspension in, which is what all of this is meant to represent, of course, all of this dynamic behavior. We can see that I've brought in now the bit of mesh that's going to be the suspension to begin with, and I've made it a child of the car parts, just like the other bits. Uh, we'll also notice here that I've actually got round to naming the model layers, which just makes things a bit more organizationally easy in here. So we'll get to work on rigging up this suspension for which I'm going to use bones. We can notice here in Modeler that I've given the suspension parts some nice solid weight maps just to define each piece of them all so as we can use them that way quickly and easily. So first thing then is to add the bone that's going to be the main part of it that's attached to the cab here. So add bone, going to call it main base and I'm going to add a null, I'm going to call it base bone pin, position that somewhere like this, make it a child of the cab mesh there, take main base, and I'm just going to use the good old constraints here. So the rotation item is base bone pin, and everything gets set to same as item in world mode, exactly the same for position here, also in world, key the thing, rest it, bring up its properties, and give it the appropriate weight map. And so now when we spin the cab, we can see that that bit goes along with. OK, magic. So next, I'm going to take care of the axles, because the suspension hydraulics need to work off of those anyway. So we'll take care of those next. Back to a good old suspension layer. Add another bone. Um, notice how it becomes a child of the existing bone. I think that's a little bug in this version of Lightwave. I just parent it back off there. And I'm going to call you Axle F for the good old front position. Now for constraints, if I wanted to constrain it between these two wheels, which is what I am going to do, I would need to put a null in there somehow to reference and constrain to, because this bone is part of a different object to the wheels, so I can't use a straightforward you know, world at 50% or whatever match. But I'm not going to do any such thing in this case. I'm actually going to use the nodal again. So same thing that we've already seen many times now got the front wheel nulls here for the left and right, adding their position together, dividing by two, and connecting that into position there. Now do notice this is a good example of nodal constraints and spaces. You'll notice that I haven't put the add 0.5 to the Y channel in here, which I should of course have to do because these guys are at zero. I should have to add that half a meter. The reason I don't have to add it is because of the truck suspension. It had the same origin point as the wheels did. So when it has been parented into its correct place, it's already at 500 millimeters on the Y. So this bone at Y0 in its own space, its parent space, of course matches with the wheel mid position. Constraining using the constraint controls and doing it in nodal is differently because of the way nodal passes just the straight numbers along. It doesn't have all of the compensations built in that this does, which is why I cannot simply just use the world position from both of these things, because the node editor just passes the numbers straight on. This null here is in the positive z at one point some odd meters. So when I take its world position, that's the value I get. And by pumping it into the bone, it goes to that value, but of course within its own space. It doesn't match in world space. 
I don't have a world checkbox for the node editor. The point is, for the centralization, I'm okay because of that 500 millimeter offset. But remember, when you've got your own parts, you will need to account for those differences in height. And you can just use add and subtract nodes to add the appropriate amount to the appropriate channel. Okay, so that's taken care of the position. Now we want the rotation. And I'm going to go back to the regular old constraint system for this and just target it to wheel number one which is this guy here, the front left wheel. That's targeting the mesh, of course, not the null. Going to key the bone and record its pivot rotation there, rest it and give it its weight map. And then we see that when we operate these wheels, of course, the undercarriage is going with the main bone, but this axle is also going with the axle bone, angling itself between the two wheels. OK, so to the hydraulics then, I take the axle F, I'm going to give it a child bone, which I'll call the shock A1. Carefully position this guy into the middle of the shock there. Now I want him to target up, so I'm going to add a null for him to target. Call it the shock A1T. Make it a child of the main base bone and put it into position there like that. You'd probably, of course, be quite careful with this. I'm just going to be a little sloppy, I guess, and just make sure it's good enough is good enough. Come back to my shock bone target it at the shock target, key it off, record its pivot, rest it, give it its weight map. I'm going to bring the length down a bit just for clarity here. OK, and there's that guy in action. Then we'll do the other side of this, so we add a child bone to the main base. We can drag snap it to that null position, set it to target that first shock bone, key it, record its pivot rotation, rest it, give it its weight map. And there we go, fully active shock on that side. 